Thank you for joining me today on Culture Keys. Get set, get ready, let's grow. Oh, thank you for joining me today. We've been talking about effective leadership, and it's important that uh, those two words go together because I, I feel like there's been some seasons in my life where I've been leading, just not leading effectively. And there may be some of you that are listening and in some area of your life, you are leading, but you just don't feel like you're getting all of the fruit out of your leadership that you could possibly get. And that's where our leaning into effective leadership principles is important, important for the way we build our leadership and for the things that we are stressing as we're preparing to lead. 10 principles of effective leadership. And we've gone through uh, seven of those. And I want to start right here uh, on the eighth principle uh, today. An effective leader must be a trusting leader, a trusting leader. And boy, trust can sometimes be very difficult for us as humans because of the the journey that we've taken. A lot of times our journey, if it's difficult or if we have been hurt or wounded or if we carry offense from the past, it can really limit our effectiveness in leadership going forward. Trust is huge and trust is the is a foundation for faith. As you and I trust in God, as you and I learn to lean on God, Uh, We can learn to be faithful. Faithfulness in our lives requires trust. And it can be said that faith is a measure of how much you trust God. So an effective leader puts his trust in God and in God alone and relies on God to do what his word has promised. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5, and this is a verse that ministered to me in a very dark time of my life, a very difficult time. And it, it's, I think it's something that I keep before me every, literally every day now. And it says this, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Your path. If you're going to be an effective leader, you're going to have to learn trust. And I'll tell you why. Because they, there will be some moments where God asks you to step before the provision for that step is made clear. When God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, he parted the waters for them before they took a step. But if you'll study when they came in 40 years later, when they came into the land of promise and those priests were carrying the Ark of the Covenant, God asked them to step before the waters were ever parted. You know what that requires? trust. I would ask you today, in what areas have you not taken a step because you have trust issues? Boy, if you're a leader, you have got to allow God to deal with your trust issues. And if you have trust issues with God, you will always have trust issues with people. And some of you have been disappointed, left, abandoned, uh, discouraged, wounded, and all of that has created a trust issue in you. Listen, God's going to ask you to take wild steps that required it require incredible trust. Do you trust him today? How long has it been since you asked, do I really trust him? Because trust will always be the watermark for faith. My faith will never be greater than my trust. What areas of your life have you not taken a step taken a step that God has asked you to take because you have trust issues? If you're going to be effective and you're going to lead people effective, I mean, think of the place and the position that God put Joshua in because God didn't give the leader of the nation of Israel. He didn't give him the next step. Amen. He said step and I'll part it. What we want him to part to do is part it and then we'll step. If you're going to really lead people into greater promise, into greater places of faith and healing and a greater place of provision, uh, you're going to have to trust God yourself. You're going to have to learn to step before you see uh, any impact or effects from your step. And I could tell you stories about the provision of God. Me coming to Louisville was one of those things. Didn't have any people, didn't have a building, 
didn't have a church, and yet God was requiring a step, and that step required absolute trust in God. Hear these words from Paul. Paul said this, I know whom I have believed, and because I know him, I'm persuaded that he's able. Perhaps your inability to trust stems from uh, the fact that you just don't know him in an area well enough. Maybe you need to study him there, study his faithfulness, study his word so that you can trust. Number nine, an effective leader has to be a prepared leader. This is one of the uh, principles of effectiveness is preparation. A leader has to expect the unexpected and be prepared to lead, to manage or minister as needed in any given situation. And pre- preparation takes sacrifice and planning. Paul said that we're, in 2 Timothy 4, 2, he said, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, rebuke, reprove, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Right? What does prep prepared mean? Ready? That we're ready. That we stay in a state of active readiness because of our preparation. This goes back, I think, and has some connective tissue with our habits. You know, what what are we doing? What are our habits that surround our gifts, that strengthen our strength and our strengthen our strengths and limit our weaknesses? What are the things we do every day? Prayer life, study life, giving life, serving life. What is it that is preparing us? And know this, sometimes what you deem to be painful or or something not to be desired. And some of you are in a season right now where you're walking through storms and difficulty. Uh, What you don't know is oftentimes God uses the most difficult and painful moments to prepare us the best. Everything that we go through, God uses it all. He uses every season, every storm. He uses every every relationship, every mentor, uh, every church service, uh, every dilemma that we walk through. All uh, are hands of the potter that prepare us. The wheel that the potter puts us on is the wheel of circumstance and situation. Just know this, everything, God is using it all so that you're prepared, but you play a part in that preparation as well, in the habits, in the way you study, the way you read, the way you pray, all of that is preparing you for a season you're not in yet. You're either becoming what's needed in a season in the future today, or you're not. And so we must set ourselves uh, to be prepared. That like Paul, that we could give an answer in every way, to the goodness and the power of God in our lives. So I'd like you to just check, in what ways are you being prepared? Uh, What is being the hand of God, the potter's hand of God, the wheel of God to mold you into the vessel that God has called you to be? What mentors are in your life? What resources are you using? What books are you reading? What mentors are you chasing around trying to glean something from? Where are you connected that is demanding that you be prepared for a season you're not in yet? Uh, I just want somebody that's listening to me to know the greater things are prepared for you, but you have to prepare greater things. You are preparing right now for the stages that you will step on tomorrow. And by stage, I don't, don't, don't think of a platform. I, I'm, I, I'm thinking of a, a, a platform or a stage just as an opportunity that God will uh, open for you in the future. The question is, will you be prepared for it? Because God uses prepared vessels, and he will take us through the seasons we need to be taken through to make sure we're prepared for the moments and the stages and the opportunities that are so necessary. When you look at the route any great man in the Bible had to go, you're going to find some difficulty being the hands of God. You'll find mentors being the hands of God. You'll find the Word of God continuing to mold and prepare. I mean, Moses uh, grew up in Pharaoh's court. He spent 40 years learning how to be a somebody. And then God had to drag him out of Egypt and put him in a wilderness season for 40 years so that he could learn how to be a nobody. And then he used a burning bush as hands of preparation 
so that Moses for the next 40 years of his life could be a blessing to everybody. God's preparing you right now. You need to take note of what is he's using and where you're reading and what mentors are speaking into your preparation. And then lastly, our effectiveness as leaders demands that we be opportunistic. Opportunistic. Successful leaders are those who are able to navigate through difficult times as well as take advantage of new opportunities that God is bringing our way. We have to take advantage of the opportunities God gives us and not just plan for the future or stay stuck in the past. Uh, you're going to be somewhere, your leadership is going to be somewhere on that time continuum. You're either going to be stuck in the past uh, or you'll be planning for the future and we need to do that. But we also have to be opportunistic today. Do you have eyes that identify the opportunities today? Are you stepping in uh, every opportunity to be on mission with Christ each and every day? Some of you take the big opportunities, but you miss the small ones. You take the big opportunities at church, but you miss the small opportunity when you're in line at Kroger's. You'll take the big opportunity you have to preach, but you'll miss the small opportunity that you have to witness on your job. Are we taking and seeing and seizing the opportunities God has given us to given to us in order that uh, in order for us uh, to take those opportunities, we have to be prepared and alert. Success happens, write this down, this will be a blessing to you today. Success happens where opportunity meets preparation. That's when we step into the God moment, take the God opportunity, and we uh, reap the God fruit. First Peter 3.15, let me quit right here. It says, sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that's in you with meekness and fear. Let's take every opportunity that God gives us today. Let's be alert and aware the moments he's called us to be on mission. I hope you've enjoyed Culture Keys today. We'll pick it up right here next week.